We're talking about quadratic relations again. And what we know already is that you can write the equation for a quadratic relation in three different ways. There's the vertex form, standard form, and factored form. And each of these different ways of writing the equation tells you something different about the graph. The vertex form tells you the coordinates of the vertex. The standard form tells you the y-intercept. And the factored form tells you the x-intercepts. If you need a refresher on that, just let me know and I can go through that with you. In spiral 2, we looked at how to change the vertex form into standard form and the factored form into standard form. And the method that we used to do that was called expanding. In this lesson, we're going to look at changing the standard form into the factored form. And that method is called factoring. So to do the method of factoring, I want to first look at expanding. If I took an expression like this, in spiral 2 we looked at expanding the brackets to turn it into standard form. So the way we did that was we multiplied each term in these brackets by each term in these brackets. So we did x times x to get x squared. x times 5 is 5x minus 3 times x is minus 3x. So we have 5x minus 3x, that's 2x. So that's where this comes from. Then we do minus 3 times positive 5, that's minus 15. So when we expand these brackets, this is our answer. Now factoring is starting with this and working backwards to get this. So what's the relationship between the numbers in these brackets and the numbers in this equation? Well, if you'll notice, minus 3 times positive 5 is minus 15. So these two numbers multiply to get the final number in the standard form. But when you add these numbers together, minus 3 plus 5, well, that's plus 2. So that's where this middle number comes from. So that pattern of the numbers in the brackets multiply to the end number and add to the middle number, that always holds true for any of these trinomials that we're going to look at in our examples. So if we look at this first one, x squared plus 7x plus 12, we want to turn this into factored form, which means we're going to end up with two brackets. There's going to be an x in each. Now we just have to figure out what those numbers are that go in the brackets. And we're going to use this pattern that I just talked about. The numbers in the brackets multiply to the number on the end. So in this case, those two numbers need to multiply to positive 12. And they need to add to positive 7. So if you can't think of two numbers that multiply to 12 and add to 7 right off the bat, you can go through a process, list out all the numbers that multiply to 12, and then pick out the pair that adds to 7. So in this case, it's 3 and 4. 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 plus 4 is 7. So we take those numbers and we just put them into our brackets. And that is the factored form. And we'll do the same process here. In this standard form, x squared minus 8x plus 12, I want to turn that into factored form. So again, I'm going to have my two brackets, an x in each. The two missing numbers have to multiply to 12. But this time they need to add to negative 8. So I've made my list of numbers that multiply to 12. 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. Those are all the possibilities. But because they need to add to a negative number, I need to have some negative numbers in here because when I add positive numbers together, I'm not going to get a negative answer. But they need to multiply to be positive, so that means the signs need to be the same. So they need to be both negative. So it's going to be negative 1 times negative 12 
negative two times negative six, and negative three times negative four. So now I have to look through my list and which of these pairs adds to negative eight. Well, negative one minus 12 is minus 13. Negative two minus six, well that is negative eight. So that's my answer right there. Negative two and negative six. So I plug those numbers into my brackets and now there's my factored form of the equation. For my last example, x squared minus 2x minus 15. We want to turn that into factored form, so I set up my brackets, and I have to come up with my numbers. They need to multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 2. So this time, they need to multiply to a negative value. That means the signs are going to be different on both numbers. One will be positive, one will be negative. So I need to include that in my list. So 1 times negative 15 is negative 15, but also negative 1 times 15 is negative 15. 2, well 2 doesn't go into 15, so I skip it. Go to 3, well 3 times minus 5 is minus 15. But also minus 3 times positive 5 is minus 15. Next in the list would be 4, but 4 doesn't go into 15, so I skip it. Next is 5. I already have 5 in my list, so my list is done. These are all the possible values that multiply to negative 15. But only one of these possibilities adds to negative 2. So now we just go through the list to find out what it is. 1 minus 15 is minus 14, so that's not it. Negative 1 plus 15 is positive 14, so that's not it. 3 minus 5 is minus 2, so that's, that's the pair that works. Positive 3 and minus 5, I plug those into my brackets, and there's my factored form. Now one thing I want you to notice is that in each of these examples, there is no number that you see in front of the x squared. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about what do you do when you have a number other than 1 in front of the x squared. So for now, we're dealing with these simple trinomials. The next lesson is going to be complex trinomials. But the principle is going to be the same. The numbers that go in your brackets multiply to the last number in standard form, and they add to the middle number in standard form. So if you have questions about these, please reach out and I'll do my best to help.